share it with somebody, tag a friend, and uh, I'm sure they will benefit if they are looking to purchase a home. So here's the scenario. Here's the scenario. Over the last 48 hours, had, had a client, okay, looking to purchase a home as a single family residence, primary residence, they're going to occupy the home. Conventional loan, okay, 734 mortgage or middle credit score, 10 years on, on, on this current job, W-2 employee, all right, and the ratios, front end ratio, 28%, back end ratio, 34%. This is a textbook scenario. And couldn't get them approved until I had to do a whole lot of machinations, right? One being increasing his down payment. So uh, somewhat alarming. And as I dug into his scenario, uh, if you watched the last home show, I kind of asked this question to, to my co-host that has some uh, experience with credit. And I felt like and I feel like, and now it's confirmed that certain types of trade lines can negatively affect you. You guys stay with me, right? So as I was digging into the scenario, trying to figure out what was going on, not just with this guy, but a couple of other uh, applicants that, you know, two months ago, no brainer. Okay. Proved eligible um, with D with Fannie Mae, except eligible with uh, LP, no harm, no foul, no problem, right? So I started looking into the reason codes. And so you might be asking yourself, what, what's a reason code? I'm going to explain that to you. But reason codes from a 10,000 foot view are this. They are credit risk factors, okay? Or adverse action codes uh, that are assigned a numerical or alphanumerical code and they're tied to various credit scoring factors and usually have a short description along with them. They're on the lender's credit report and they are associated with our next to each agency, Experian, TransUnion, Equifax, and the credit scores are in other words, this is why this score is coming up at the time that you're pulling this credit report, right? So as I've delved dove into this scenario and looking back at some more recent uh, difficult approvals, here are some of the reason codes that are popping up. And two, the reason and the motive and the purpose of this video, the first one, it's reason code number six, right? And, and this is tied to TransUnion, Equifax and Experian. They have different codes, but for the most part, they're pretty much the same, okay? Same concept but too many consumer finance company accounts. And so all credit, all trade lines are not equal. They're actually levels and they're tiers. And these types of accounts specifically are accounts that are associated with people that have riskier, less favorable behavior when it comes to credit. Okay. So you got to hear that. You got to hear that. Too many consumer finance accounts, right? That's one that I'm seeing a lot, okay? Now, you might ask, well, what type of companies or who specifically do I need to look out for? Well, I'm not going to name any names because we don't want any haters, but you will be able to identify these places because a lot of times they're associated with people that are doing credit repair, <laughs> okay? They're charging you for credit repair. You guys know how I feel about it, right? Uh, but here's the deal. When you hear things like buy now, pay later, no credit check, 0% interest. These are all lower tier type of, of accounts that are associated with people with riskier profiles. That's all I want you to get with it or from it. So what are you saying, Robert? What I'm saying is there's levels. Okay. There's levels. Because again, the scenario, this scenario here, this is this is the dream scenario. OK, 730 middle score, 10 plus years, same employer, same company. Right. Ratios 28 over 34. Anybody that's in the business knows this is the business. This is what you're looking for. 
but had a very difficult time and had to had to defer to my expertise and experience to even get an approval, but it wasn't at the down payment uh, amount that the person was looking for. And it really boiled down to this, too many risky types of accounts, okay? Now, we had a video a couple of weeks ago where we talked about the trended data and how Fannie or the FHFA is going to adopt those types of scoring models in the future. I'm not an alarmist, but you know what? <laughs> Pay attention. A lot of you guys that want to buy, you need to buy now. Okay? Because I'm already starting to see the algorithm change. Right? And it's going and looking at behavior. And you are not going to be able to manipulate just the credit score anymore, but it's going deeper. It's going deeper. It's going to, it's going into the two factors that really dictate your score, your payment history and how you use your, your credit over a period of time. And we can't hack time, right? Although I, I guess there's a way you could authorize users, but that's really, it's not going to be weighted as much. Okay. So, uh, for those of you that are on the fence, for a myriad of reasons, but for the context of this video, you got to watch those consumer finance accounts. And here are some of the things, some of the ways you can determine what a consumer finance account is. Buy now, pay later. All those folks that got you doing credit repair. Okay. No credit check. 0% interest. Those are some clues, some looky loos for you to be looking out for. Here's another reason code that's popping up. 0, 0, 0, 0, 10. It's basically 10, right? Proportion of balances to credit limits is too high on bank revolving or other revolving accounts. Okay. Again, guys, practitioner, 20 in the game. Now I can say 20, right? Before it was a little puffery, but I'm actually at 20 now. I'm, I'm, I'm the doctor that's on the front lines, right? That's the one that you want to go to you when you need a surgery. You don't want to go to these cats that, you know, they don't know. They haven't been given a lot of different scenarios, right? They look pretty. It looks right, but they don't know what to do. Okay. This is what I'm talking about. This is actual factual in the field, helping you guys get to where you need to be. Right? So now this is the credit card stuff, the utilization. It's been everywhere over the last two years. Here's the deal. I'm going to give it a game and it's free, right? I know y'all don't like free game, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. I don't care what your credit repair guy told you or gal told you. Tell them to holler at me, right? We'll get on. And, and if I'm wrong, they could correct me. And it's not a debate. I mean, we're grown folks. I don't really have time for no debates, but it's about education. Here's the deal. Here's my experience. 20 years actually reading guidelines and understanding how to get folks into homes, how to keep them in their homes and how to help them grow their portfolios if that's what they want to do. Utilization, the best credit scores, right? The best, the highest. Okay, first of all, you don't need 75 credit cards. You don't, you can use one. Okay, I challenge anybody on that. But two to 5% utilization reported on the statement date. Right. Try to make that payment three or four days prior to the statement date because there's a lag time. All right. And don't use the card again until four or five days afterwards and never pay interest. That's the game. But two to five percent. That's the best utilization on these cards. Right. The next tier would be six to nine percent or stated differently. Never more than 10 percent of the available credit limit in totality with all of your credit score, uh, not credit score, but available credit as a pie and each individual card facts. Now, if you're over that, here's how I would look at it. If you're looking to get into a home this year, right? You want to have the higher credit scores. Okay. Now, now we know we got to also look out for the consumer, right? These type of accounts, consumer financing accounts. But if you're trying to have a higher credit score, Here's the deal. You need to get that utiliza utilization down. Now, if you want to get out of debt, okay, 
Dave Ramsey, whoever you want to give credit to. Snowball effect. It works. Psychologically, it works and it works. Right? Highest to lowest. Minimum payments on everything. Everything extra on that one. Knock it out. You're going to get that endorphin. I accomplished something. You take all that extra money and attack the next. Minimum payments on the rest. Right? That's how it works. Okay? So if you're not buying and you're not trying to get the scores up, and you're trying to get out of debt, right? You want to get those credit card balances. If you don't have the ability to pay them all the way down to 10% or less or two to 5%, the next nine, what does that mean? If you got 50%, if you could pay it down to 49%, okay? You want to get into that next nine, okay? Free game, free game. And lastly, lastly on that point, right? Um, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save that. I'm going to save that. Let's move on. Let's move on. So, that was the reason code. And here's my solution to that. Okay. Now here's the next two reason codes that I see that are common, right? Time since delinquency is too recent or unknown. Again, the two largest components of your credit scores at this time is payment history and utilization. 65% per my co-host. That's a credit guy, right? And per me that knows these things. I know more then your credit guy does. Trust me. <laughs> but I digress. So time since delinquency is too recent or unknown. And then the serious delinquencies, a.k.a. You, delinquencies got to pay your bills, man. And if you can't pay your bills, the to me, you shouldn't spend money on fixing, putting a band aid. You got to figure out why you can't pay your bills. What's the problem? Because if not, you're going to be back there too. You're going to be back right where you are uh, after these folks hoodwink you into thinking that your credit is being repaired. Got to got to repair your habits, your behavior. I digress. So those are the next two most common reason codes that I'm seeing, right? And, and here's the deal. This is how you handle it. Whatever state you're in, because we live in all states, Texas being the home state, home country, best state out there. I'm biased, right? But you want to find out what the statute of limitations are in your state, okay? And then you look at it from that lens. Here's the deal. If it's a collection, it's already done. The only time you're going to pay a collection, the only time is if you could get a deletion letter. Now, here's the deal. Since this pandemic thing has been going on and all this drama, I've seen more deletion letters than I've ever seen before, Right? Some of y'all making a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. You went to cons <laughs> and got conned. It's in the name. No disrespect, right? You know better, you do better. Okay. Now you got a five dollar balance with don't dispute it, man. Pay them people and ask them for a deletion letter. Change your life. I digress, right? But uh find out what the statute of limitations are in your state. OK, and then you deal with those collections accordingly. Some of y'all, some of y'all. Right. Once you figure out, as my mama says, what the root of the problem is, is if it's if it's income, you might have to look at the BK route. Chapter 13, because they they folks before you done killed the seven. You, you got to really be in a situation and they're going to verify to get to a seven. But at 13, the real debt consolidation plan. Right. It might work for you. But if you have the ability, if you have the money, if it's just a budgeting thing, got to get it together, man. I'm trying to tell you this stuff is going to get crucial. It's already in play. Right. You got to quit thinking, hey, I can go run and manipulate the score. They're going to start looking at your behavior, how you live. He <laughs> trended data, data over a period of time. Right. So those of you that are getting where you fit in now. Because it's coming and I already see it, right? So check the statute of limitations. Only pay off collections that you could get a deletion for. And please, stop disputing stuff. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, man. Come on. Please. You just make it harder on yourself. And the scores that your, your guru that you're paying, that they got you monitoring and they're going up, the only reason they're going up is because that trade line is under dispute. And while it's disputed, it's not factored into the, to the score. 
just had this happen. Hey, man, you got to remove that dispute. 50 points disappeared. Well, why am I? You, I didn't do anything. That's your, the, the, the people you pay. They put disputes on everything. When you remove that dispute, we see what your scores really are. Because that's all we want to do as lenders. And a lot of you guys don't realize that uh, exceptions have been made for years for collection accounts. Okay. A lot of times you don't have to pay them off. You just have to know the guidelines. But anyway, I digress. I, 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 I digress. So there you have it. That's the reason I wanted to come on.